in Bradford High School, and also all of you who are watching the live stream on Seven Bay College's YouTube channel at Seven Bay College. My name is Jay Anderson, the Communications Manager at Seven Bay College. I'll be moderator for this evening's forum. We have had and are still getting a number of questions, and we're going to make every effort to ask all the questions that we get. Uh, is every effort to, to ask those questions. Questions can be emailed to Seneca College Professor Dr. David Price at david.price at sfcollege.edu. We also are accepting some handwritten questions as you came into the auditorium. You saw the questions, uh, uh, there was a box set up there, an index card, and some pens. And as I mentioned earlier, before we got the screen going, uh, because of COVID 19 restrictions and social distancing, you get to keep the pen after you fill in the card. The goal is to have this run for roughly an hour, or not that much longer, and giving each candidate two minutes to respond to each of the questions. By my math, that gives about 15 questions that we should be able to go through during the course of the forum this evening. Before we do begin, I do have the pleasure of introducing to you the Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs at Santa Fe College, Dr. Villa Fuentes. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much to those of you who are here live in person for taking time out of your busy days to be here with us and listen to uh, these two candidates uh, and learn more about the future of education in Bradford. Um, thank you to all of those of, all those of you who are joining us through live stream. I hear it's close to 100 people uh, for taking time in your evening to join us. Um, I have the distinct pleasure of representing Santa Fe College together with two of my colleagues, uh, Jay Anderson, Dr. David Price. Uh, and I'd like to take a moment just to remind you about Santa Fe College's commitment to Bradford County. Ever since our college was established more than 50 years ago, we have been committed to serving this region. And this can reveal itself in many different ways. It's in establishing strong educational partnerships with the Bradford School Board, uh, with individual schools. Um, it can be in helping to organize civic engagement events in the community. different uh, organizations, businesses, uh, the Chamber of Commerce in the area to be able to envision a new way to promote economic development for the region. So it is an honor and a privilege for us to be able to be here today, partnering in yet another event. Um, to be able to, you know, envision a better future for your region. So thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to hearing the debate. Thank you, Dr. Fuentes. Uh, final note before we begin, I do want to let you the candidates have not been given any advance notice of the questions they will be asked tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I am invited to the stage and reminded them to unmute their microphones to the stage. The candidate for Bradford County School Superintendent, Stacy Craven, and the Santa Fe College staff to Bradford High School tonight. Thank you for taking the time to invest in our citizens of Bradford County. For those visiting for the first time, Bradford County families have enjoyed a terrific partnership with Santa Fe College over the years. The Andrew and Stump Centers in Stark are showcases for our community and a hub of higher learning that we are very thankful for. Santa Fe College has shown an unwavering commitment to our community and we thank you. As our relationship with Santa Fe College continues, I'd like to take a moment and thank former President Dr. Jackson Sasser for his tremendous leadership and commitment to Bradford County. Just last fall, Dr. Sasser was quoted in the newspaper saying that our dual enrollment program has never been stronger. 
His leadership, along with Dr. Brody's, is the reason so many of our youth are taking advantage of the incredible opportunities Santa Fe College provides. Tonight, I look forward to sharing the facts and data that will clearly show the improvements we've made over the last four years. I'm very privileged to represent an incredible team of professionals that has worked extremely hard to improve graduate scores. Our students are competing at the highest levels in years. I look forward to sharing their success tonight with you, but first we must remember the point from which we started four years ago. In the fall of 2016, we had to get a line of credit to ensure our fund balance did not dip below the required 3%. We were operating off of a cash log in finance because our business software was unreliable. Our high school's transcripts were inaccurate and bright futures did not even recognize that Bradley County had a high school. Our high school band was small and struggling. Our high turnover rate we created a revolving door for teachers and staff. Our one and only high school was rated as a D by the Department of Education. Since my election in 2000, November 2016, our fund balance has more than doubled while we gave our employees raises every year, improved their benefits, and renovated and cleaned their working environments. We have improved safety, schools, and teacher retention. Our high school has been a B two years in a row. Our third grade students outperform the majority of third grade students in the state. And all of this data is from 2019, so the numbers reflect only three years of growth as there were no scores in 2020. We have increased student opportunities by expanding dual enrollment, AP classes, industry certifications, expanding programs like band, FFA, and ROTC. We have secured funding for a $38 million new school. And just today, we had a grand opening of our new Vistar branch in this high school. Mallory Watson, the student branch manager, described her school district as awesome. And that is what this is all about. We did all of this without raising new taxes, and we are just getting started. With your vote on November 3rd, we can keep Rapper County moving forward. Thank you. and I did not prepare an opening statement uh, because I didn't know I was supposed to, so I'm going to wing it. Um, my name is Will Hartley, born and raised here in Bradford County, actually a couple streets over. Um, come from a long line of educators here in Bradford County. My family has put in well over 250 years into this county. Um, I'm a graduate, 1999 graduate of Bradford High School. I uh, then graduated from the University of North Florida with a degree in physical education. I uh, taught and coached here in our county for 10 years. Uh, and my platform is basically about collaboration, about teachers. Twice in the last of four years, we put a new teacher academy in place to support our new teachers. And prior to our new teacher academy, um, in the 2011 to 2016, we had three teachers complete with their temporary certificate to get a professional certificate. Since our new teacher academy, we've had 13 teachers complete, and this data is found on the Florida Department of Education website. We are supporting our teachers and helping them to remain teachers in our county. 
They're working very hard to keep them. Um, we have a great system of collaboration. We do teacher roundtables every year in the spring, except for the last spring when COVID kind of disrupted us. We also do teacher surveys. I take a, a big survey into a faculty meeting with everyone present, teachers and staff, and they can be set four pages. And it talks everything about a professional development, a code of conduct, how it's enforced, what they found helpful, what they didn't, and um, also on the administration. They get to rate their administrators. From the surveys, we found that 94.12% of our teachers were happy with their administration at their school. And I think that's huge for teacher retention because you, if you have someone that you can go to with your concerns, you may not have to stay there. And that's what we've seen in Becker County. So we will continue to do that. <laughs> Uh, well, first, I think probably the most important thing about keeping veteran teachers is improving the morale. Um, veteran teachers, want, they want to stay here. I've talked to many of them. They really enjoy this county. They enjoy the kids. They know these kids are the type that you can really make an impact on, and they want to stay. However, um, currently, over the last four years, we've had 15 teachers leave here and go to Union County. Most every one of them, when I spoke to them, said it was because of the morale uh, or something to do with the uh, the work experience. So another thing that I think is important is over the last four years, we have dropped to um, 62. veteran teachers, um, how is that not improving? And then another thing that I think is very important when it comes to this is that um, our teachers that have are teaching out of field has raised tremendously over the last four years. Um, in 2017, we were at 4.2%, and now we're at 15.1% teachers teaching out of field. So if we are retaining these veteran teachers, we definitely need to get them certified and get them into place. Um, when it comes to the, the uh, teacher academy, uh, when you look at that data, obviously whatever we're using isn't working. So we need to sit down and talk with the veteran teachers and also the new teachers and figure out how to get things better. I think the biggest issue with the grad rate is how we're tracking our students. Um, our students need to be tracked not just not just once they get into high school, but but once they're in middle school. Uh, right now, what's happening is our tracking method is is basically uh, is basically a vetting system, and they're removing students to homeschool, and in a way that raises the grad rate. Um, that uh, there's some very alarming data when it comes to that kind of stuff, um, and uh, it, it's really sad what's going on because. To increase the school grade, uh, you remove students through uh, to homeschool. It, it's upsetting. If you look at the year that the grad rate jumped 10 percent, which was 17-18, uh, those students that went the junior year from 16 to 17 to 17-18, 17, 83 students disappeared. There's no way to explain that other than they were withdrawn to somewhere that they didn't show as a dropout which means they either had to transfer to another school or they were removed to homeschool. Um, in my opinion, that is not a successful school system. Uh, those students, if you take them to college, help them learn a trade so that they can go have a successful life. Okay. We've had 
increase our graduation rates, and it was done legitimately. Our improvements in the graduation rate are due to the following concentrated efforts of administration and teachers. We have a graduation coach, Ms. Renee Castles, who's focused on our seniors. Our graduation team meets weekly and goes over every student in a, in a tracking chart that was developed by Carl Detlison from FDOE, who showed up to work with our early warning sign spreadsheet. We meet weekly and we review each senior and discuss what mentoring, tutoring, or other action would help them get across the finish line to graduation. The so-called investigation that has been compared to Manatee County does not apply here. In Manatee County, the superintendent instructed data entry to change the enrollment without current notification or approval. That has not happened here. The, um, we have followed all the rules. This investigation is nothing more than a rumor created by a former disgruntled employee. And I'm just going to say, this is the same tactic used against Trump with the Russian collusion. You start a rumor, you use the investigation of that rumor to tarnish the candidate regardless of the truth. Here are the facts. Our students are graduating at higher rates because we're tracking them. When you look at our dropout rates, our seniors are moving to homeschool rates. Our seniors are one of the lowest numbers. It starts with our 11th graders, and then it goes to our 10th graders, our 8th graders, ninth graders, and then seniors. If we were looking at who moves to homeschool to raise graduation rates, the seniors would be first, and that's not the case. Every parent has the right to choose what is best for their child, and they can choose homeschool, just as my opponent and his wife have chosen for their children. As a Republican, I defend that right because the parent is in the best position to know what is best for their child. As a superintendent, I want to make this the obvious choice for every student in our district to come to Bradford High School. As a parent, I have put four children here, and they got a wonderful education that allowed them to pursue their dreams. I have a daughter in med school, another one that's about to start dental school, one that's going to be graduating this year from this high school with an, going on into engineering, and a sophomore. This is a great place to get an education with, with professionals that truly care about your children. And when he disparages me as, as creating this false graduation rate, he is actually disparaging the, the very employees and our administration that are best in their self trying to make it work and do the best they can for our students. They've done a tremendous job, and I will stand behind them. Well, we just have a reopening plan at the last school board meeting to follow the governor of the state directives. Um, that's why we are at the head of the capacity in here and at our sporting events. We're continuing with masks as highly recommended and not required um, because the health of our public works is too bad for the state of 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 the Wearing a mask and wearing a face shield, it does not impact the decision of who has to go home. So we uh, we're continuing what we're doing and continuing with our orders and, and our disinfectants and cleaning and trying to spread people out at six feet. And uh, we've been doing the really good job. We have not had any home from the high school, middle school, and, and most of our elementary schools. So it's been working. Um, well, I'm not a mask wearer, but I respect those that do uh, wear a mask and the parents that send their kids to school and feel that way. I actually like the idea of bringing in a third party, uh, maybe, a, maybe a doctor or a group of doctors that can actually look at what we're doing now and see the changes that they feel could be made. Um, I think that that would, and even if nothing changed, what it would do would, would go a long way for the parent to feel comfortable sending their kid to school. Because I think at this point, everybody understands the situation with the FTE count. We need to do everything we can to get our students in our schools. Um, and if it, if it takes something like that, 
uh, maybe it's sending their kids to school, then that's the kind of thing we need to do. Uh, I'd like to go back to the last question because uh, we sign wave a lot. And one morning I had a man pull up behind me. He asked me to come to his car. This man uh, basically explained to me how he was helping to watch out for his niece. The mom was going through a hard time. Grandma had taken her in. He stops by grandma's house over and over again, three or four days in a row, the girl was home. He's trying to figure out what's going on and uh, starts calling around, finally gets to school, somebody to answer. They tell him that she's been withdrawn to homeschool. He asked grandma, he asked grandma why the girl was withdrawn to homeschool. She didn't even realize that when she signed papers that that's what happened. So, <laughs> you can decide if that's a good policy or procedure to carry, but for me, that's not good enough. And I've heard several stories just like that. A lot of phone calls made. Uh, maybe if your student isn't doing well, they should go to homeschool. Maybe if they're getting in trouble, they should go to homeschool. So, that's what I hear in public. Next question. Why do you think the membership in the teachers' union has grown substantially in the last two years? Do you consider more of a positive and negative development? And how do you plan to work with the union in moving forward? Uh, I think, without a doubt, the reason why the union has grown is because they're they're uh, they're wanting to make sure they have representation. Uh, under the current superintendent, we've seen 17 grievances reach stage two, multiple lawsuits. Um, an environment has been created where the teachers think that they might be next. So they joined the union to seek protection. Uh, I've talked with several teachers that have been in our, our system for 20 years plus. They were never in the union. In the last four years, they joined the union. That should speak volumes within itself. So what I think we need to do is get together with these teachers and the union and actually try to start working together, get on the same page, because in the end, when there's division, it only affects our children. Um, I want to start by uh, a rebuttal to the first. That's the first that we have heard of an elementary student being moved to homeschool without a parent or guardian understanding. And when you sit here, I've been on the board 10 years, superintendent for four years after that. Mr. Hartley has never come in to the school board meetings or to my office and complained of this. If we don't know, we can't fix it, and I don't know of that story. <laughs> the Bradford Education Association has grown, and I believe that they have done so with a fear tactic. I know that people have been targeted, that they would go on their BEA page and put, do you have any information or complaints about X department? Then they would come to me with those complaints. I would go and address it, and that person that was in that department that was the target of the complaints has since joined the union. Lo and behold, now she gets the protection of the union and they stop targeting them. <sighs> the union has violated their own um, uh, bylaws. They do not announce when their meetings are. People that are favorable to me cannot get on their, their BEA site and vote and participate. The um, union um, former music president that is now a disgruntled former employee um, did a survey in February of last year. In that survey, she surveyed select union employees. Of them, 36 teachers were dissatisfied with their job. 
Those 36 teachers are 13% of our total instructional staff. That is not the vast majority. When you look and you have 94% that they have a good administrator and we have a teacher retention rate of 94%, I don't think that's a coincidence. However, is it likely that union members are unhappy? Absolutely. When you look at the state and the National Teachers Union, they have made a vow to defeat Republican candidates. It's a well-known fact. I am the Republican candidate. Our Bradford Education Association posted on their Facebook page, the blue wall is coming, and believe me, the Republicans are going to pay for it. That's where they are. That's their goal. I believe that our teachers have a good morale, that we've worked hard to improve communication, their pay, their working conditions, regardless of their union membership. Will we work with the union? Absolutely. But I will not keep non-working teachers in this district. If they're not working out, I will hold them accountable, and I cannot hold them accountable. And I will continue to do so. How do you your previous work experience? But I think it's a little bit of an important and how long have you been working in education? Absolutely. I started as a school board member um, in 2006, and I'm very proud of um, being on the school board. It gave me a great deal of experience. Um, dealing with budgets, policies, um, legislative initiatives, the code of conduct, the pupil progression plan. We work on all of that as school board members, and it was a wonderful job, and it did prepare me to step into this role in November 2016 and hit the ground running. I knew what could be spent out of what fund, I knew the rules, and I knew our personnel. So it, it was a big help. But even prior to that, I was 23 years as a, a volunteer, booster, and active parent in a Bradford school system. All four of my children have attended public schools, and I'm a big believer in public schools. I think that our district has shown that we've made great strides in four years, and we want to continue to do that. Okay, so first I worked in education for 10 years before leading to start my own business, um, which my wife and I have run for the last six years. Um, my teaching experience um, gives me the experience of walking a mile in the teacher's shoes. Actually being able to relate to them as it allows to understanding and also understand uh, diverse population of our students. Um, actually being there with the kids, seeing the differences from all of them will definitely help me meet the needs of every student. Uh, it helps you understand things like relationship building and why that's so important. Also collaboration and how big of a deal that is when it comes to morale. Um, working under several different administrators and seeing the strategies and things that some did that were good and some that were bad, the things that you would look for in people as you hire. Um, my business experience, I definitely gained management skills, hiring and firing, time management, seeking out the people that knew more than I did about certain areas and learning from them the things that I didn't know. That will definitely help me as a superintendent. And then also, of course, managing money. So I think um, without a doubt, my experience will help me be a good superintendent. Um, well, first, I think you, you need to look at the projects that are underway and prioritize. Find the ones that desperately need to be finished, the ones that are impacting our children, not the things that are for show. Um, things that actually impact the teachers and the students. 
those are the things that have to take priority, especially during a time when the budget is going to be lower. I think the biggest issue is going to be trying to get our students back. Um, being leadership that the parents can trust, that the right thing is going to happen by their children, and to try to start getting some of our students back so that we can raise our FTE and get our funding. Uh, I think that will definitely be the biggest hurdle. Well, we have been doing this. Um, when you look at our facilities, we know that we're taking the money from the local capital improvement fund instead of our general fund. We're also looking for other ways to pay for our needed stuff. For example, we are getting a $1.3 million grant from the county due to COVID-related stuff that we're transferring in and letting it assume some of the expenses that we would have otherwise been taking out of our general fund for our uh, local co capital improvement fund. So you have to be creative, but you also have to be a very good steward of that. We're looking at um, our allocations very, very closely, and we're following the students. Um, the needs follow the students. We have um, a one-to-one -one ratio with our technology, so uh, we're good there, and we should be good at for years to come. And um, we have got a plan in place, and we're executing it, and that's how we've been able to give our raises every year, and as well as grow our fund balance. Well, we have been transparent. When you look at our school board meetings and our workshops, they're always open to the public. We um, try and utilize our social media. Uh, we try and do uh, the robocalls to let people know what's going on and keep them up to date. We try and um, get the information out there. I've done a number of um, articles in the newspaper saying this is what's new for this year, and I continue to do that. I do a newsletter for our employees once a month so that they don't know what's going on. And I've started a newsletter for our um, parents and families also once a month, just keeping them abreast, especially with COVID, of what's going on. We've tried very hard to ramp up with ever-changing information to get it out there as soon as possible so that we're all on the same page. To me, transparency means honesty. Uh, and I think when it comes to uh, parents' right to know what's going on with their child's education, there should be full transparency with everything that's involved. Um, there's definitely been things that have gone on with our district that they have not had transparency. And if you talk to teachers specifically about communication, a lot of them feel like um, things are almost even kept from them or hidden until the last minute and then things happen and nobody knows about what's going on. That's definitely not transparency. Also, there is no reason why the school board meetings cannot be live streamed. Um, especially during COVID, that was a big issue. I know the community had with that was the fact that certain number of people could only go in the school board uh, building, but they would not live stream so that everybody could see what was going on. When you do that, it makes people feel like you're trying to hide something. And that causes distrust. And you cannot do that with people's children and expect for them to respect you uh, and think that you're doing a good job. Well, right now, I wouldn't even know what to say about that. Um, given the new school is coming and in the work plan, it's written that Brooker and Hampton will consolidate with Southside. 
I've talked back and forth with the state a little bit about it, but didn't want to push the issue to the point that it might cause funding issues and that kind of stuff. So until I know from the state exactly what can and can't be done, you can't even make a decision on something like that. I will say this, I visited both places. My wife went to Brooker Elementary School. When you go there, you wish that every single student in our county could experience what those students experience. Uh, and I hope that we can create that kind of environment. But as far as closing the schools or not closing the schools, the plan that was turned in that she signed says that the schools will consolidate. Until I know what can and can't happen from the state, that's as much of an answer as I can get. Before I touch on that, let me explain about the school board meetings. Those are just what the name implies. They are school board meetings. The superintendent does not determine if they are live streamed. That is for the school board to determine. I had our secretary call every school board member. If they wanted it live streamed, it would have been live streamed. End of story. But it's not for me to do against their wishes. Nor would it be for any superintendent to do against their wishes. It's not our meeting. Secondly, I've made my position on Brooker and Hampton very clear. The statute says the school board will determine who goes in a new school. They will determine the boundary lines for every new school. They will determine who closes and who consolidates. That is not going to change no matter who is superintendent. I can say what my recommendation would be, which I have. I put it in the paper. My recommendation would be to make the new school a full K-8 to with all of the middle school and all of Southside. Brooklyn and Hampton would remain open. I've been very clear. That being said, it is not my decision. That would be my recommendation, but the school board will vote. I have been very committed to arts education in Bradford County, and I believe it's shown in the advancements of our band program, our chorus program, and our art program. When you look at the growth that we've had in these programs, we have 10 ensembles. We have two teachers at the middle school, one of which is here tonight. We have a high school band that is performing at the highest level with straight superiors. We have to support this. When you talk about getting kids back, they're not going to come for a great algebra class. No offense, Ms. Bowen. <laughs> they will come for band. They will come for those electives, those things that they can shine in. And that's why we're making the investment to keep those programs going and keep them strong and keep them growing. We have programs that are a model for the state. They are doing so well. And I've got to credit our band instructors, our chorus instructors, and our art instructors. They have a passion for their job. That the students see and that is reflected in their numbers and in their scores. So we're blessed in Buffalo County. I'm committed to supporting every program in our schools. Uh, and, in, and in saying that, doing so equitably, uh, I love our band program. My son's in middle school band. He loves it. Um, the high school band, you come and watch how they've improved, they're obviously doing a great job. The issue that I have right now is the fact that I sat in this room a few months back and heard that the band budget last year was $60,000. When we have, when we have uh, wrestling coaches, track coaches, other activities, reaching out to the community asking for money, $300 at that, to sign up for some kind of tournament and they can't get it, but the band gets $60,000, there's a problem. 
That is like me picking one of my four children and giving them money and not giving anybody else anything. So I 100% support the band. I support the arts and everything. Everybody equally. Um, and they will all be treated the same. But definitely equitable. I think they should be printed. <laughs> All report cards are printed upon request, so they can be printed. But I'd like to go back to the band program because that's that's funny. The county, the school district does not give the band sixty thousand dollars. He has a sixty thousand dollar budget because he raises it privately. The school district, the school district only pays for the repairs on their instrument and the gas in their buses. That's it. We have bought a drum set for the middle school and a drum set for the high school. But I liken that to when we're trying to teach uh, math, you need math books. If you're trying to teach band, you need instruments. And to expect them to raise it all on their own is, is unbelievable. They were spending the majority of the money just trying to keep their broken instruments repaired. So the school district took that on. Now privately, I have donated. I have donated, my husband and I have made a commitment that no kid in Bradford County will not be able to participate in band because they don't have an instrument. We have donated thousands of dollars to that program because it is life changing and we want our kids to be able to participate in it. I'm sorry, could you say it again? What the park does or should CDR in the lab? I'm not aware. In high practices, more senior employees and more experience. Seniority in hiring practices? Um, our administrators hire their own teachers, and um, they can look at the um, experience of a candidate. Um, we don't dictate to them who they hire. I believe that if I'm holding the administrator um, accountable for their school's performance, they get to pick their team. Um, they can look at seniority, but it shouldn't be the only factor. Um, we do have some that have come from other districts that are very senior, and we're glad to have them. But um, you've got to get the best candidate possible that you believe will mesh with your team so that you can get the results we need for our students, because that's what it's all about. Um, I think seniority is important just, just for the simple fact of loyalty. Um, people that have stayed with you for a long time, I think that I think that in a situation where you have two equal applicants, then you can look at seniority as a factor. Um, but at the same time, seniority should not be the, the major deciding factor in hiring uh, somebody. It should be the qualifications, um, what you see, what they've done on paper, but also um, their personality and who they are. I can look out now and see a bunch of very young um, teachers that display a lot of really good leadership qualities. And those are the types of people that you want to start to pursue uh, to say, you, you should look into ed leadership. You should look into possibly becoming a principal one day or, or something like that. Um, and then there's, there's some teachers that have taught for 20 or 25 years and they're burnt out. And if you had those two together, you'd pick the one that you knew had the fire in them. So I think seniority is important. It's something that you could decide on if you had two uh, people that were equal. Seniority might take, take place there. Uh, but the person's quality should definitely be what they're hired on. <laughs> Thank you. 
to know what the pedagogy students and the pedagogy teachers. Can you repeat that question? Sir, uh, to what degree you can say the system level administration is better able to know what is best for students than better for teachers? I'm not even sure that I understand the question. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a step and explain it. To, to what degree you say the administration is better than the teacher, but if you've got a high level teacher at the Oh, I think I think the classroom teacher that's right there with them, uh, as far as planning out, there should there should definitely be collaboration between the two. Uh, I, I don't necessarily see that it would be better for one or the other, but the classroom teacher should definitely be having input on anything that's planned for a student. So to pick one or the other, I don't think. Um, is the case, but the teacher that's in the room with the students that know exactly where they're at and, and their level of uh, learning and that kind of stuff should definitely be in on any decisions that are, that are made. I believe it's a collaboration between the two, but I also believe in accountability. Um, in some situations, I know that we had um, some teachers doing two recesses while other teachers are saying they don't have time to get everything in. I do think that there needs to be um, a, a level of accountability from the administrator to determine, hey, you know, these kids are behind. Maybe a second recess would be um, not warranted at this time. Um, but they can have that conversation, but ultimately it comes down to accountability. We need our students learning in classrooms and we need administrators to make sure that's happening. So. What do you consider to be your greatest strengths as a I believe making the hard decisions and sticking to them. Um, this job will never put you in a position where you can make everyone happy. There's no way. You have to be fair across the board. You have to enforce the code of conduct across the board. It is not going to be popular, especially when, when people will sit across from you and say, but I voted for you. And I'm like, well, this is what you voted for a fair, equal treatment under the administration. I think my greatest strength would be communication. Actually, actually um, collaborating with everybody involved, the teachers, the administrators, um, actually being the person that is willing to listen. Um, not to micromanage, but to let people do their job. Um, and I think, I think without a doubt, that's, that's my best strength would be somebody that could actually ask the right questions, listen to the answers from the people that are in the room doing the work with the students um, and work together to create solutions. <laughs> I think, um, and, and it's, it's one of the things in building relationships is you have to pay in and pay in and pay in to get somebody to pay back. And I think one of the things that definitely needs to happen here, if you look at our community, there's not a lot going on for our youth. Um, I think our schools are the place to be the hub for our community um, where we can come together and have more events, more social things that go on, things that show the parents come, let's have some drinks and a hot dog or whatever it is. Let's have movie night on the football field. Let's do these things and show you we care about your kids. We love your kids. Um, bring them in and show them that. And I think eventually you start to get more buy-in from the parents. Um, and it's, it's, basic, it's pretty basic relationship building. Really. Yeah. 
we have been always trying to increase parent participation. Every elementary does parent nights where they're trying to bring them into the school with book bingo and pizza nights. We've done FSA parent nights on our football field. Um, a lot of our stuff got curtailed due to COVID, but we were hoping to bring it back. But parents need to be in a partnership with the schools and we are trying to include them more and at every level. Our graduation coach has done a phenomenal job with NCAA nights, with um, FAFSA nights. So come in and they'll help you fill out your child's college applications and federal loan. We got recognized from the state due to our increased participation. So we are working and we are making strides in this and we're gonna to continue to do so. Sure. Um, if elected in your next superintendent, my commitment to our parents, students, community teachers, um, administrators, everybody here is that we will all work together in the best interest of our children. Um, without a doubt, a child's education is one of the most important things that will ever happen in their lifetime. And I think we need to make sure that the parents can trust us to do what's right by their children. Um, that's what I'm committed to. And if I'm elected, my wife and I will be basically adopting 3,000 students. So, thank you. I'd like to thank Santa Fe again for this opportunity. I invite all Bradford citizens to remind themselves of the most important question one should ask before hiring anyone. Do they have the experience to do the job? As a candidate, I'm proud of the 14 years of district leadership experience I've gained working for the citizens of Bradford County. That experience consisted of over 10 years on the school board, working with budgets, policies, code of conduct, pupil progression, and a lot of other initiatives that governed our district. This experience allowed me to hit the ground running in November after the election. I am the only certified superintendent of schools on the ballot. I was involved for over 23 years as a volunteer booster and active parent in the school system. All four of my children attend our public schools. As a family, my husband and I have donated thousands of volunteer hours and tens of thousands of dollars in funding to our school programs and organizations across the district over the years. The only candidate to do so. With this experience and an incredible team of administrators, teachers, staff, parents, community business partners, boosters, and volunteers, we have improved across the district. Four years ago, this high school was a D. Now it's been a B, two years in a row, back to back. It's only been a B three times in school history. Our district was one point from a B in 2019. Our third grade reading scores have beat the state average. Our teacher retention rate is 94%, one of the highest in the state. We have given raises. We have lowered health insurance premiums. We've retained our teachers, while at the same time, we've more than doubled our savings account. We've improved our facilities. This auditorium is one example. We have facilities that our students, staff, and community can take pride in. We improved the safety of our campuses. We have a school resource officer on every campus, and we were one of the first counties to participate in the Guardian program. I represent, <laughs> I represent a team of very hardworking individuals that invest daily in the success of our youth. Being superintendent means you have to make the tough choices on a daily basis for the betterment of our citizens, coworkers, and students. I am the only candidate who has this experience. The recognition we receive now is the result of hundreds of professionals that have invested tirelessly into our programs and youth. I am so grateful for their dedication and the success we have because of it. I hope the voters see the huge differences between the two campaigns and refuse to go back to the days of it's who you know, not what you know. Bradford County has proven, Bradford County has proven it can be competitive with anyone with the team we have. This election, I ask you to vote like your children's future depends on it, because it does. 
Let's keep Rafford County moving forward. Vote to reelect a proven effective leader who is a certified school superintendent. I ask for your vote on November 3rd. Thank you.